Good morning, my peeps. Hello. Um, Tracy Stewart here, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. <laughs> um, I'm doing this a little early because we have uh, Manny Petty for the dog and uh, not sure what, what the timing is going to be like. Um, also, to let you guys know, um, one of my favorite parts about being a demonstrator is it means I don't have to wait for things. Well, you guys lucked out and you do not have to wait for things either. Because a bunch of the embellishments had gone out of stock and the, a couple other things and they are all back in stock this morning. Um, Stampin' Up! had a day of service yesterday that, where they were doing charitable stuff. Making some bikes and doing some stuff for local charities. But they must have also um, busted their hump restocking shelves because almost all of the embellishments from the, um, the Christmas catalog, including these lovely stars, um, are back in stock. Uh, the paper is still out of stock, but most of that, I think, in the next couple weeks should be back into September. So a lot of it's the 2nd of October. Um, I check frequently, like almost every day, what's in and out and what's new on the website. So I will keep you guys posted. This um, star, Stars at Night bundle, the folder had sold out, I think, before the catalog even went live. This is one of the hybrid folders. Um, it came back in stock early as well. So it is in stock this morning. Um, it's one of those fun hybrid ones. And funny enough, that's what the purpose of this morning's video was going to be, is to show you that. Now, I don't have this because it I I, th I didn't buy it right off the bat. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go buy it. And then it sold out. <laughs> so I couldn't get it. So now I'm going to order one. So yes, group order going in. If there's anything you want, let me know. But like I said, these embellishments, um, there's about six or eight of the embellishments had sold out. All seem to be back in stock. A couple of the kits, there was three kits that sold out during the sale. Um, two of those are back. The Boho Beach and the Confetti Birthday, I think, was the other one. Those are both back. Um, this Part of the stuff for this had sold out. Um, it's now on low inventory, um, the cards and that. So if you guys want to come to this class, um, this class is for sure going ahead. We've already got four people. I'm very excited. Um, I can take more. I can take up to like eight or 12. I think we got the, we got the big room this time. This is so much fun to do this thing. Um, I think I've told you before <laughs> how much fun I was having. Um, I, I can't stop making the samples. Like these are my samples so far. I just keep making more and more and more and they're just, they go together quick. Um, I'll have the little extras and stuff, but you all get your own pack of embellishment, a pack of the 20 card bases and envelopes and a pack of the memories and more cards that are the patterned cards. And there's just so much you can make with them. I'll show you how to make treat holders and I'll show you how to, or um, gift card holders. And I'll show you how to turn a card base into a box very easily. And then you can decorate that up. And oh, it's, it's going to be fun. This set is so addictive. But um, I would like to know if we have any more than that because I want to order them before these cards sell out. Because if these cards sell out, it's a whole different class for you because <laughs> they do all the work. Um, so yeah, let me know if you're interested in any of that. Now here's what I wanted to show you. Uh, I had my open house and we were talking actually about that night. What, why do I keep calling it the wrong name? Stars at Night Bundle. And um, I'll just move my mouse out of the way. I don't really need that. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to a couple of people and they weren't sure what that meant by hybrid. Like, could they just get the folder? Just get, and I thought, you know, I'm not sure if, uh, if we've used this enough to like let anybody know exactly like it's a genius it's a genius thing and there uh, currently there was a flower one before um there's currently i think four of them i have seen the lemon one it is called sweet sweet lemons and it makes okay so first off it makes you anything citrus right so even though it's called sweet lemons or sweet citrus i guess it's called um it's this one here it's in the annual catalog so you can make grapefruit limes lemons you name it but one very clever demonstrator used this, these dyes and the stamp set and made coconuts and they were the cutest. Cause if you leave the paper white and you just color the, like just stamp the rind, it looks just like an open coconut. It was absolutely genius. And then I can't remember the name of it, but there's another one that makes a doily in the annual catalog that I forgot to look up ahead of time. So now I can't tell you what it's called. But anyways, there's a few of them. This one, of course, <laughs> speaks to me, um, ringed with nature. And, the, and because they're all basically the same theory and, and almost the same look, if we want to phrase it that way, um, I thought I would show you some of the stuff. Now, I pre-cut a whole bunch of stuff so you don't have to sit and watch me um, die cut because that big machine shakes the desk and the camera and the whole bit. I didn't think that'd be fun. But I'll show you all the different versions and then pop a card together quickly for you so you get the idea. 
yes, I like this dance, as you can tell. So all of them um, basically have like one big piece, one big die that works um, with the with the folder. I'll show you this in a second. Uh, and then they all have other little bits and pieces. So the main element of the set is what the, the folder will do. So it's designed that you can use this as a folder. You can use it just as dies or these dies fit in and my dies are slightly warped because my case has a buckle in it. I got to change it out. So my case buckles, which has been pushing my die, but it doesn't affect the use of any of them. But as you'll notice, and I'm, I don't know if you can tell that I'm moving my fingers, my thumbs here, this die fits into like little grooves in the folder and it just stops it from sliding. So you can, you can put the, the paper and in with both the die and the embossing folder at the same time. That's what they mean by hybrid. You can use them alone or you can use them together. So, oh my goodness, the possibilities, right? So here's what we have. We put a regular piece of paper in the embossing folder and we run it through and we get beautiful 3D, like deep 3D embossing of tree, well, of a cookie. Those of us in the biz, it's a cookie, all right? So this is a slice of tree. So you can see the rings, you can see the rough bark. The bark is definitely raised up a lot more, but then there's there's actual grooves for the rings. So this makes a cool back. I, I was trying to use lighter colored papers because I think it shows up better on camera. So, I mean, you could just make a white back, but you could make this out of, you know, any tree color or any color you wanted, really. It's a cool pattern, right? Even if it's, even if you're not making a tree card, it's a cool pattern. So this is just straight up embossed. Now, if I did the same embossing, but then I put these, so I put, I, or, sorry. So if I did the same thing, I took the same white piece of paper, I put this in, um, I put the little rings in and I found lock on them. <laughs> and I find that when I'm putting this through my embossing machine, you want to put the hinge first. So let's be correct about it. So if I'm putting this through my embossing machine, I would go like this. I would take my piece of paper. And I mean, if this is a card base, it's only this big. So it, it may not necessarily um, cover the whole thing. If I'm actually cutting out pieces, I would make sure that my card base covered what I wanted to. So I would lay this on my machine because it moves around less. Close the close the uh oops, close the lid and then run it through and then what it does is it embosses and cuts the rings out at the same time so it has die cut all of these i threw away one little piece that was only half cut <laughs> because i didn't put a big enough piece of paper in it but so it cuts them out and embosses them in one go super handy <laughs> super handy um I, I um I don't know that every time I do this I would put like if you wanted to you'd need to put I think like a five by seven piece of paper in here to get the whole thing and then trim it down to size for your card but I think you could just put in like the size of the card base if I was making this as a, a background piece um, and I would do it this way where I could actually see what I was doing I would just make it where I had the most of them and if you know you're going to run off the edge of the page, just use the edge of the folder because it's already got, it already ends at like a nice straight line. Um, and just do it like that. And just know that you're only getting partial images. If you're cutting them out, then yes, make sure your paper is big enough that it covers all of the cookies you're cutting out. Like a regular card front is not big enough all on its own. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. A couple things. Stampin' Up's embossing folders have their logo on the front. This is the emboss side. On the back is the deboss side. <laughs> so what that means is when you put your paper in, the emboss side, so this one, is this side of the paper is going to raise up. The back of the paper, the one that's touching the back side, is going to deboss, which means it's going to go down. Now, on some embossing folders, it looks equally awesome both ways. This one, it looks cool on the back side, but, but to me, the front side is how it was meant to be. Now, you can use it either way. What, if you're just putting a blank piece of paper in and embossing, it really doesn't matter. But if you've pre-stamped something on here and then you're going to run it through the embossing folder, it really matters that you put it in the right way. If you want, like if you want, I mean, I could have stamped leaves all over this, right? Or something. And then I want to run it through the embossing folder. I need to make sure that if I want the side with the stamping and the raised up image to be the same, that I have to put 
the, the Stampin' Up! logo on the top on the same side as this as the ink. Now, the reason I tell you this is, did you know that you can also take your ink pad, which I don't have in my hand right now, just a minute. You can take your ink pad, uh, pretend it's open, and you can put in, um, ink directly on a folder, right? So you open it up and you just pop, 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 pop. I would do it right now, but I'll end up with ink all over my hands by the time I'm done. Um, you just all over the folder, and then you can put a piece of paper on top of it. And in this case, you want to make sure this is like ink it up. I'll do it again. Ink it up. Put lay it down on your like your your um, cut and emboss machine or on the table. Put your paper on it and don't move your paper. You'll just end up smudging everything. So you want to be able to set it straight down and then close it. Now once it's closed, as long as you're squeezing it like t lightly squeezing it, then you could move it around a bit and get it in the machine. And then you can run it through. So what happens when you do that? All the just the best effect. <laughs> Look at this. So this is what I did. I inked up my embossing folder. I put a piece of paper and I ran it through. So now, oh yeah, you can sort of see all of the embossed stuff is basically outlined because anywhere that there is a ridge on this folder, I don't know if I can, yeah, I don't know if I can get the right angle to show you that, but th these are all ridges, right? Like, like you can feel them. So anywhere there's a ridge on this side of the folder, the ink is sticking to. So when it's, oops, spoiler alert. So when it pushes down on the paper, it's pushing ink into everywhere it pushed in. It is a very cool effect. Now, just to show you the difference, I also inked up the backside at the same time. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now this is kind of a cool effect. When I look at this, I see a beach. For some reason I see a beach with like little, or, um, um, fossils i see fossils like this is like a rock and these are you know the little worm looking shapes that always seem to be in fossil pictures so this is the backside. so it's a lot a lot darker with ink because this one the most of the folder is raised up and it's it's got little grooves in it for these pieces to hit so if you put ink on this side you get way more coverage if you put ink on this side you just get the outlines where it pushes the paper in so this very cool background like it so then i'm thinking okay well why not two for one this one too so what i did was i inked up just the front of the folder this time and then i went i'm going to put my little i'm going to put my little uh, dude in here so i went like this but the thing i found was when i went to drop it in it didn't instantly drop into the grooves but i didn't want to push all the ink all over the place so i was trying to line it up without really moving it very much so i, I got it where i thought it was supposed to be I put my paper in, I ran it through the machine and I got about halfway and I'm like, oh, it's not lined up. So, and it wasn't. So what I did was I ended up, this thing was just slightly off on a couple places that I hit about halfway, but at that point I was committed. So honestly, I just ran it all the way through. So now I have a couple cut marks that are out. I don't know that you'd be able to see them, but there's so like, this is where it should be. There's, the cut line is over here on this one and there's one a little bit more. So luckily it doesn't affect how the folder works, but these little grooves cut my embossing folder because they weren't lined up with where they're supposed to go. So it didn't really work for that reason, but it also didn't really work because it didn't line up properly. So it didn't get like, these ones didn't even cut well. They didn't even cut all the way through. And these ones cut, but not straight. So what I would recommend if you're gonna do that is um, and maybe and maybe with certain dyes it will work or if you don't mind a little bit of smudged ink you can put it in just make sure it's lined up all the way without touching the ink very much before you put it through so i would recommend just do the inking stage and then just once once you've inked up the piece of paper this dye works on its own right so i could ink up this piece of paper and like in the embossing folder like i just showed you and then i can just put this through with just the dye because the dye works on its own just roll it through like this and it will cut all these shapes out. It squishes a little bit, but not very much because you see it's, I mean, it's a hollow die, right? So it doesn't really impact the embossing and it's just way easier to see what you're doing. And even, even in the embossed paper, this die kind of locks into place. So it's way easier to do it if you're going to do this in two steps. But if you're just doing the background, I mean, oh, isn't that awesome? Okay, so just I got to move my duds out of the way. Now, one of the other things that this does is so you can do your embossing and cut out with the die 
Um, I also did, just so in case you're wondering, I put it through a second time, like without re-inking it. And it does pick up most of the ink the first try. You see there's very little ink on the second time. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you're going to do multiples, you basically have to ink every time in between. But because I just wanted these as background, I didn't even care if they had ink on them. So, <clears throat> so what I did was I ran my embossing folder and with the dye in it, just so, just so nobody's confused, with the dye actually in it, <laughs> I ran it through and I made a sheet of crumb cake cookies. That almost sounds like a thing, crumb cake cookies. Uh, I ran it through. Then I made one of these sheets um, using just the embossing folder and ink. And then I cut it out using just the die so that I ended up with um, cookies that were cut out but that had the ink on them. Now, oh sorry, Okay, I made the I made the layer. When I cut these ones out, I digress. I, for, I forgot to show you one step. So when I cut these ones out, oh, do, 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 do. I think this is this one actually. Um, what I did was I put these dies down. Now in this stamp set, you'll notice there's all those extra rings. Each one of these dies also has I think it's this one has an inside die, and they're very easy to figure out which way to go because they all have these little notches in them. So you basically just have to look where the notches are. Like this one has two notches on this side, one down there. So this one fits like this. So these little dies will fit into the grooves of the embossing. And so when you cut them, you can either cut like this, which is what I did, which is not what I meant to do, but just to show you. So you can either run it through like this and it will cut out, cut these things apart into two pieces. So now I have these little rings which I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with, but I'm going to do something with them because they got a cool pattern on them. And then you get the centers. If I had done it with just the centers, so if I had left the big die out, <clears throat> excuse me, and I had just, <clears throat> get, get a better prop. If I had done this, I could just take this piece like this, put all of these little these little centers in here. Okay, let's, let's just pretend I lined them up, okay? So line them all up. Like I said, they, there's grooves. It's just a matter of me not wanting to be patient enough to do it. So if I had done this, I could put it through just like this. It would cut all the centers out and leave the entire rest of the sheet intact, which would give you like a peekaboo effect. Like you'd have all these little tree rings and then you'd have all these little openings. You could have like little animals poking their head out or something. It'd be super cute. So you can use just the circles. You could use the circles with, or you could just emboss. Like there's so many things you could do with this thing. And they all basically work the same. It just depends what shape they are, but they all pretty much work the same way. So the reason I wanted just the centers is because I want my crumb cake one. That is not the right size. Let's see, which one did I just take? <laughs> I just lost my piece. Where'd my piece go? There it is. Sorry. I, I just pretend like I was ready for what I was doing. I think I have the wrong pieces in front of me right now. That's okay. I can't find my right piece that goes with my right piece all of a sudden. Here, I'm just going to go with this one. That's not the right one. <laughs> I did, some of them were off to the side because I was just grabbing scraps of paper off my desk, quite honestly. Um, and uh, so now I've lost my piece when I moved them. Now, Oh, there we go. That's what I did with it. <laughs> moved it the last time. Anyhow, my point being... You can, these ones are trimmed off, but I'll use them anyways. So this is, this is the embossed one that I then cut out in crumb cake. This is just the center that I did in very vanilla. because That is very close to the color of the heartwood of uh, most trees. And so this fits in top. So now I can take these two pieces and I can make a two tone. So it actually looks like an actual cookie slice with the bark, darker bark on the outside. So that's what these little rings on the inside are for. Right, so I can add centers to them, and then, like I said, I'm going to find some cool thing to do with these, make little trims that them, interlock them, make some cool pattern. I don't know. It just seemed like I'd be able to use them more separate than together. Um, so then the last thing that's in the kit that they usually have, and because I didn't, I wasn't actually able to get the star. Um, I don't know. Oh, see, that's why. There's the piece I was looking for the whole time. Um. Because I didn't get the star embossing folders when they first came out, I haven't actually been able to play with them. 
But in there, there's in the picture, you can see that in the stamp set, there's one big star. Oops, how do I put that where you can see it? And in the middle of this embossing folder, there's one big star. And they look like they go together. Um, and, and it shows that you can cut out all these individual shapes, right? So I think you might be able to stamp this one and then cut it out, right, the same way. That's what it appears to be. Um, that's what you could do with the lemons. That's what you can do with this. So it makes sense to me that you could. So this one just has one size of the cookie in the stamps, right? And it's got extra, um, it's going to be hard to see, but, oh, I guess I could just show you this way. Ding, ding. Um, it's got extra, like, um, year lines in it, right? So this is an older tree. Look at how, how many uh, tree rings there are on it. So this is the actual stamp that's in the thing. And there's only one, it does, there's not the six different or five different sizes of rings. There's just the one stamp. So you can also just like stamp a background of tree rings and then you could put like, so you could stamp and you could put a big one over top, right? Just kind of layer them up. What I will tell you though, and I'm not sure with the star, the star looks more like it would work, like that it would be an exact match. So with this one, I took the middle size of just the solid ring to cut this out. And it does not exactly cut, I'm gonna use this to show you. It does not exactly cut the, the, the pattern, right? That's not the right one, sorry. It does not exactly cut the pattern. So you can see where I've stamped and you can see it still makes the two notches, right? So on this one, it notches out to match the embossing folder. On this one, the notches don't quite match. So you could cut it like this and depending how you were using it, you might just need to trim it a little bit and it would work just as well. But I also just stamped it on a different color for comparison. Um, it is super easy just to fussy cut and like get around the edge of the thing. Super easy. So these hybrid folders are meant to work like alone or in pieces or in combination and with stuff. So whether it's this one, whether it's the new star folder, <clears throat> excuse me, lose my voice there a bit. Um, whether it's the citrus one or the little door, they all do multiple things, which is the cool part. Oops, there we go. Um, I need to make a card. So I need to move my stuff out of the way. So you can see they all come as a, as a thing. So when you buy the bundle, you get the stamp set, the embossing folder and the rings. You cannot buy the embossing folder and the dies separate. They come as a package in these bundles. So you either, you can buy these two pieces together, you can buy the stamp set on its own, or you can buy all three of them come as the bundle. And that's for all of the different ones. So I'll show you again in, oh, actually here, leave that open, I need that for later. Um, so yeah, using the one piece, so now we know, again, to recap, you can just emboss, you can emboss and cut, you can emboss with ink, <laughs> um, you can cut out insides and outsides, and you can stamp and you can fuzzy cut. <laughs> we have many options with a hybrid and many lots of pieces left over that will all be sacrificed and made into cards later. So just to show you a, there we go, a cute card though. Um, I will also tell you that yes, waste not, want not. I stamped this cause I was gonna use this as a layer and I'm like, I'll just stamp it in a different color so you can see. So I stamped this, I stabbed my scissors through the middle of the paper. <laughs> So that I didn't cut into any of the edge pieces and then I just fussy cut around it to get this little guy out of here because when I tape this down you're never going to know there's a piece missing and if I needed to I will show you okay sneak peek Oop, squirrel world card making day is coming up and all right guys this is where the uh, original video recording cut out uh, not sure why uh, this is attempt number three at figuring out voiceover without getting a video that goes over top of the entire thing. So I'm going to do my best. I am watching the video on a separate screen. Hopefully I will be somewhat in tune with what is happening on the screen. So yes, this Heartfelt Hexagon is a set that is in the January catalog. Um, for World Card, Mark, Card Making Day on the 7th of October, we got to order it early. Anybody can order it early. Anybody can go to World Card Making Day. See my newsletter for details. So this was an early set. It's got great sentiments in it. It's got lots of different things, but I love this punch, as you can tell, because I used it on the card already. But I'm just, uh, I like to make the most of paper. So I'm, you know, you can punch out, cut out, do various different things. 
this is especially helpful if you're using like gold foil paper or one of the foils or the specialty papers or DSP where you don't want to bury all that nice paper underneath. Um, I don't always do this, but if I need a piece and that happens to be what I have out, yes, I will do it. And sometimes with specialty paper, I will do it. A um, couple things that you want to remember when you're putting your adhesive on to put your layers together, uh, put your adhesive on the part that has the holes in it, because that way you won't put it anywhere that there's no nothing to back it, because um, then you end up with um, adhesive everywhere and it just makes a big mess. So in this case, just go around the edge so that when you adhere this piece down, um, none, of the, none of the adhesive's in the wrong spot. Uh, the other thing to note is this piece has embossing and ink on it and everything like that. So it wouldn't be super obvious, but if you were putting like a gold foil sheet over top of this background layer, if you'd cut some out of the cardstock and then we're putting like, or a lightly embossed piece or something, if when you put the top piece over, if you like rub down over top of it, over top of where the holes are, you can make the impression of the holes come through the top layer. You know how you used to scratch over pennies with a pencil and paper and it would bring the imprint up? Kind of the same idea there. So you really only need to like press down where the adhesive is anyways, which is just on the edge. But yeah, just be careful because those holes that you don't see, if you push too hard on the top layer, you can sometimes make them come through. So that's what we're, that's what we're cautioning against. Um, I'm just going to pop this up on some dimensionals, put on my card base because I love dimensionals. Uh, to me, dimensionals are the, uh, the Frank's red hot of, uh, of card banking because yeah I use those everywhere. Um, I'm also realizing now that early espresso on a video is the exact same color as the silicone mat so you can't actually see the card base but you know these are notes for future videos let's say. Um, it's almost a shame to cover up this background because it is just so nice but then all the other little bits and pieces in the set are nice too so you know hopefully that you just you can you know some of each and still see a lot. Do love that background though. So there's the new punch. Um, this is a, a stamp from the the Ringed with Nature set. It's just using that new punch. And for some of our like happy birthday sets and that, where they don't quite fit on a rectangle because the H's are higher or the Y hang, the, this uh, this hexagon shape I think is going to be perfect for those. So all of the sets have something extra. The I, I told you the citrus one has flowers and leaves. Stars have little stars. This one has these extra little pieces and you can use the same three pieces to make two different things. So the cap and the little half circle make the acorns. And then that same half circle and the stems make the mushrooms. Um, and to do Howard Anderson, my forestry entomology instructor proud, those guys are real fun guys. <laughs> His joke, he would, anytime he talked about mushroom, he would say everybody liked him because they were a fun guy. And then he would giggle to himself because he was so funny. So when I'm putting a card together and it's got all these little bits and pieces on it, I will dry fit it. So I will put all the layers down without adhering any of them, put all the pieces down, see if I like it, shift and adjust and move as much as I want. Then I will pick the pieces up starting with the top very carefully so as to not knock stuff and use tear and tape to hold things down. Or in the case of these guys, I just put it across the top so I could like pick the whole, like all those bunches of sprigs and the fun guys up. And I set it off to the side. I put adhesive on the back of that one because I knew I was also going to adhere it down. But that it so it the tear and tape on both sides kind of held that little bundle together. And then uh, I did on there's some sprigs on the bottom as well. And then when I go to put it down again the next time, I don't have to keep rearranging and dry fitting every time. So um, even if I was doing it just to make the card in all in one sitting and not prep it and then finish it in the video, I would still use that same way. I just find it easier to do. Um, and I just make sure that wherever I put the tear and tape. I know it's going to be behind the label. And then when you go to put it back the second time, you just make sure when you like set the label down, make sure it's covering the tear and tape. Um, I also will always peel off the top of the tear and tape because I want adhesive to adhesive. I don't want this adhesive to stick to the slippery part. Like the coating is kind of slippery on the tear and tape or on the, on the back of the dimensionals, those pieces are slippery because um, I don't want them to come loose or pieces to come loose. So I'm, peeling off the layers there and peeling off the back of the dimensionals. So if there is any overlap in those adhesives, it's sticky to sticky. So it's not coming apart. I feel like I'm peeling the dimensional backs off in slow motion.
So I, that, like I said, I did the same thing with the other two little sprigs. I had set them down and I just put a piece of tape over top to hold them together. Um, I cut them out of garden green and then I decided afterwards I wanted the stems to be darker. So I tried to color them with, with crumb cake, which really just made it a darker green. It didn't really make it brown. Um, so then for the final ones, I did color them with my um, early espresso stamp and write marker and that gave me the effect I wanted and they're very easy to color uh, the other way to do it is to cut the bottom in early espresso and then cut a second layer in garden green put some adhesive sheet on the back before you do and then you could take like just snip off the leaves and put just the leaves over top and then you'd have I mean that would be very pretty to be dimensional too but uh, that seemed like a lot of work so yeah I just cut them in the in the dark green and then with my marker just ran it over top um, and cut them to make the so I had the branches so I could do it in one cut. This one I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to peel off the tear and tape that I was using to hold them together and just tuck it underneath the edge of the, um, the label there. This doesn't completely rule out having to do a little bit of adjusting and stuff, but for the most part, it keeps me from having to like dry fit it several times before I can stick everything down. So just tucking that one under. And then with the, with the acorns, um, those two little pieces, I find the easiest way to adhere them is with a piece of tape, uh, tear tape across the seam. There wasn't enough for me to overlap them. So this is coming up and I, um, I will show you so I don't end up talking over the second part like I did the last time. Um, so yeah, I just put a piece of tear and tape on the back. And then when I go to stick them down, just make sure that the two pieces are kind of snug together when I stick them down and it holds the two pieces just fine. Uh, for the second one, I did put it um, dimensional on the back of it. Again, Frank's Red Hot. I love those dimensionals. I did put them on the back, but I made sure to peel off the, the, the top layer, the protective coating or whatever on the tear and tape. You can see the shiny part where the tear and tape is holding the two pieces together. And then I stuck the dimensionals right on top of that so it will hold nice and snug. And again, just get a peel and stick. Uh, we have great adhesives. You just have to make sure that you're, you're uh, using the right one in the right scenario. And yeah, try to try to make sure that if you have any kind of a shiny surface, you get adhesive to adhesive on it. So there we go. It's such a cute little card, though. I love the background. And the only reason you cover it up is because all the little bits on top of it are just as cute. So there you go. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I said next in this video. Sorry, I just for a moment there, I all of a sudden lost track. These videos, um, there's like, like I said, I think there's four different of the hybrid embossing sets that you can get. Um, I would suggest if you buy one of them, like the stars, which are back in stock now, do, do what I did. Just take them out, cut a bunch of pieces, do just the embossing, just the die cutting, die cutting and embossing. See if you can ink up a folder, ink up both sides the first time. Um, when I ink up the folder, I think I forgot to mention, you can use a wet paper towel, a baby wipe. I just use my scramp it, stamp and scrubby, the, my little thing that I wipe my stamps with, and it just the ink just wipes right off. I wouldn't leave it on there overnight, but I wipe it off just after I use it. Try it, get all your bits and pieces, see what they can do, and then you have all these pieces ready for when you actually start your crafting and have fun. So I am... Uh, Glad you had the patience to stick with this and watch it all the way to the end. And I hope the recording wasn't too wonky with the, what was going on below. I have no idea why it's not cut out. Um, but uh, I am thinking of you and I'm hoping you have a great weekend. And I am done now. <laughs> Thank you guys very much.